In this Flutterflow video, we're going to look at conditional colors, visibility, and positioning of widgets within your apps. Let's get started. Okay, this is a uh, pretty simple one aimed at Flutterflow beginners. And what we're going to look at is changing colors, positions, and visibility objects uh, conditionally, basically. So uh, if we go in here, we've got a blank blank space now so if I just add in a container uh, it's sitting there centrally and obviously I can change the color just put a color in there we'll change it to blue for now and I can make it move around within its widget so using the alignment options kind of decide where it sits it's one thing you can do and also um, you can make it conditionally visible using the um, using the toggle here uh, now we can do all of these conditionally we can change the alignment conditionally we can change the color conditionally and obviously the visibility will be based on conditionals as well so if I show a very quick example on this blue box and then I'll show you an example of what I've done recently with uh, with with one of my sample projects. Right, so to do list, let's have a page state variable. So you've got a few. In fact, we don't need, really need any of those because this is basically a sample project. So if we call it. color and call it a boolean and the initial field is true and then let's do one for visible and that's the same and we'll call it true okay confirm and then let's add in a couple of rows and we'll get some toggle switches okay so all i'm doing here is just obviously so initial switch value is true so what we'll do add an action and state management update page state we'll change that one color to false and then do the same on that one add an action page date and we'll call this one visible and set the value to false right so basically what's going to happen is we toggle these it's going to make a change so if we on the container so down on the color section here we can set the color obviously um, just normally or using the little orange lines there we can set it conditionally so if we go we want an if then else statement so that wants to be a single condition and essentially our if our page state color is equal to false let's have the color to be orange else i.e if it's true we'll have the color to be the primary blue okay and then that will make the when we toggle this switch it will make it disappear or appear and then um, on the alignment we can do some alignment here with these numbers but I'll do that second so and then with these switches if we set both the initial values to false so they're off because what we've done on our actions here we're setting the value when we toggled on we're changing the value so we'll, we'll start with them off and also on the container 
means you actually need to make it conditional. We've done the conditional setting on the switch. So on the conditional value here, what we've basically done is essentially if page date, i.e. if it's true, that's essentially what that means. If, if page date is true, then it's visible. So that's what we're doing there. And so what's going to happen is on test mode, when we toggle the buttons, it's going to change color on the top one and then it's going to disappear when we toggle the bottom one. But when it disappears because of the way the we haven't set anything up on the sort of layout of the page, um, the buttons will probably just go to the top I'm guessing so let's try that. so top one changes color and bottom one it disappears and saying the buttons go back we haven't set anything up to go the other way but so I mean it's pretty simple but it's also quite powerful so let's have a quick look at the location one so if we put in another page state for location and again it will be and we'll call it initially true and then on this bottom switch here we will change the um, location to set value to false that's fine. So what we're doing, we're now updating the page state for the location, not the disappearing, the, the visibility. That's all we're doing there. And what we do then here on the container. So as I just sort of demonstrated, you can position it within the child widget using that. And if you notice there, the X and Y values are changing. So what's that one? That's minus one, minus one. So what we'll do is we want an if then else so if our page state location is equal to false and then we want to set the value to minus one else zero so obviously when it's true it stays at zero if we click that change it to false it'll go to minus one and then what we'll do is we'll copy that variable and we'll also put it in the y so what will happen is when we go to false it should go into that top corner so let's reload so change it to orange and then up into the top corner so not very exciting obviously in terms of what it does however it does give us an idea of how we can use conditional actions on color visibility and location just in the properties here and just using page state variables or we can bring it from a database whatever so I'm going to show you now is um, the simple chat app I've done a video on it's a simple group chat app uh, which I've done is step by step and we're doing exactly the same here so on a chat obviously it's pretty standard that incoming messages are on one side and outgoing messages are on the other so they depend on you know, whether it's one of your messages or not and what we've done now look we've got a conditional value on the container there within its row so what we've got there is basically if it's an incoming message it sits on the left it's an outgoing it's on the right I think or obviously the way around what that's doing is changing its position within the row for the um, for that container and then in terms of colors again on the container doing exactly the same thing so if the user ID equals the um, user in the in the field in the database which I'll go and show that in a second then we're just changing the color of the uh, of the message bubble again pretty standard message chat stuff so on the list view we have the database query and if I just click on that just so we can get the and then the user is the user's UUID so essentially for both of those two condition actions that we are done on the container there we are comparing 
the user ID, the logged in, the authenticated user's ID against the user in the database row. So that will know if it's you sent the message or not. So if you sent it, it goes one color one side, and if you didn't send it, it goes the other color the other side. It's a pretty simple way of using the conditional conditional actions on on that. So um, that's basically how you do it. And then on the visibility side, and also in this app, if we go to groups, we have got conditional visibility on these item on uh, these buttons. And essentially, if you are in the chat group, the minus icon will icon will come up. So we've got a database field that is a list of UUIDs, user IDs, and if your user ID is within the list, the minus sign comes. You can move yourself in the group, and if you are not in the list, which is what that means, then the plus side will come up, so you can um, add yourself to the group. So those examples in this very quick demo here, that's I've used them exactly the same ones in this group chat demo app. So, so it's a pretty simple one, uh, but it's something that you're going to use all the time when you're building uh, apps with Flutterflow, conditional visibility, locations and colours. You're going to use it constantly. So hopefully that helps and you can use it in your projects and um, I will speak to you next time.